up until z plus n. Okay, that's an ugly <laughs> direct proof. T to the z plus n power. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do something pretty amazing once again and my highest and greatest respects to the boys back then, Daddy Euler, Daddy Gauss, who are actually able to derive stuff like this elementary and to, who gave rise to great formulas like this. So we are going to deal with our best to Furendo de Gamma function once again and today we want to actually show that there's a different definition of this thing right here as an infinite product of some sorts. So that's actually like quite cool. We have dealt with infinite sums before, but infinite products, that's fucking new. So yeah, be prepared for that, my boys and girls out there. And yeah, um, I want to give a little inspiration for what we are going to do today. At first using just our gamma function at integer values. Okay, that's what we are going to do at first. Let us take a look at gamma offset. That's an ugly looking gamma interpreter, sorry. Well, as we all know, at int integer values, that's nothing but z minus one factorial. And at this point, we are just going to do simple algebraic manipulations to arrive at something pretty dope. Why not advance this by z over z? So you know in the numerator, you're going to get z factorial and down here over z. But what is z factorial? Well, that's nothing but 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, blah, 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 up until z. I want to make a little stop in between. That's nothing but 1 times 2 times dot, 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 up until some strictly less than z integer n times, well, n plus 1 then, up until z over z. <laughs> okay, coolio. This is what we have right now. But we are definitely not done yet. We're going to continue this Spielerei right here a little bit. I would like to kind of turn this numerator into z plus n factorial, meaning all that's really left to be multiplied up here in the numerator is times z plus 1, times z plus 2, times blah 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 up until z plus n, okay? But you can just simply multiply numerator by it. You also have to divide by the same stuff, okay? In order for this to just be a regular one that you are multiplying with. Meaning we're going to end up with 1 times 2 times dot 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 up until n times dot 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 z times z plus 1 times blah 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 up until z plus n over, okay, z times, same stuff, z plus 1, dot dot dot, z plus n. It's just a little bit of playing around, nothing really um, special to see right here at the moment. I don't really want to collect all those terms up here. I've put those terms for different purpose up here in the numerator. If we just close off this multiplication right here, you see this first stuff is going to vary to an n factorial. Okay, I hope you agree with me. We have n factorial over z and then times z plus 1 times blah 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 up until z plus n and also we have those terms from n plus 1 up until z multiplied together. So overall we have n plus 1 times n plus 2 blah 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 up until well z plus n or I'm going to put it like this, n plus z over, well, z plus 1 times dot 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 up until z plus n. In a few minutes, we are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. For this purpose, we would like to kind of manipulate stuff such that something cancels out in the process nicely. I want you guys to take a look at this right here. I cancelled off this factorial for a certain reason. Let's count how many terms we have up here actually. That's pretty easy to count because in all of those parentheses we have n as a common factor you could say. Meaning here's a 1, then there's a 2, 3, 4, 5 up until z. Meaning overall we have z times stuff in parentheses up here. Also, what we can do, out of all those parentheses, we can actually factor out the factor of n. Meaning, for example, we can turn n plus 1 into n times 
n plus 1 over n. I hope you agree with me that this is true. If we do this on all those terms, we are going to get n times this chunk times n times this chunk, blah, 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 up until n times this chunk that's left. We have z terms up here, meaning we can collect all those n terms to be n to the z power. Okay, so we are going to get n factorial times n to the z power. And then we have, okay, n plus 1 over n is actually nothing but 1 plus 1 over n. We can just make use of the property that our numerator is actually additive. So we have 1 plus 1 over n times dot 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 up until 1 plus z over n. Also down here in the denominator, we just have what we have. So this is z times z plus 1 times dot 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 up until z plus n. Let me get something to erase a bit of stuff. Et voila! That's a bit better. <laughs> like I said, we want to take the limit as n approaches infinity now. Under the condition that our limit actually exists and it's bound to exist because if we take the limit as z minus 1 factorial where n approaches infinity then, well, that's just z minus 1 factorial, that's just a constant. We can actually break up the limits a bit because if we have the limit of a times b, if this actual limit exists, we can break this up into the limit of a times the limit of b. Meaning we can break this limit up into all those different parts. And for this purpose, I would like to take a look at the limit as for example, 1 plus 1 over n, where n approaches infinity. Okay, limit n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n. Another condition that this limit exists, we can break this up into the limit of 1 plus the limit of 1 over n. Limit of 1 over n, when n approaches infinity is 0, so this is going to evaluate to 1. And it really doesn't quite matter what you have up here, you can have a k up here, as long as k is finite, you're going to get 0 right here. Okay, so this term in the limit goes to 1. This term in the limit goes to 1. All those parts in between go to 1. So, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of this whole chunk right here, we are actually just going to end up with the limit of this crap approaching infinity. So n factorial, n to the z power over z, z plus 1 times z plus n. And we kind of know that this is supposed to evaluate to the gamma function in the limit. So, okay, we are going to give this thing right here a new name. It's kind of a sequence of some sort. So why not um, use this gamma notation with a little n down here. And also I'm going to refer to this limit as n approaches infinity as capital N because we are going to use this later. So this thing right here, I don't think it has a certain name. Maybe incomplete, no, incomplete gamma function is something else. So let's just call it kind of gamma function because there's other stuff out there. There's also a degenerate incomplete gamma function of the nth kind whatsoever. So much crazy stuff out there. Yeah, let's just call this kind of gamma function. So if we take the limit as n approach infinity of the kind of gamma function, we are going to arrive at our gamma function itself. At least that's what to be expected and we are actually going to show that we can also put this kind of gamma function in integral terms. Okay, but we are not done yet. So I want to play around with this chunk right here a little bit more and starting with just n, n to the z power whatsoever. Okay, this is kind of the Euler definition already of the gamma function, but we are not completely done yet. Okay, we want to bring this into the conventional um, form. Let's take a look at n. Well, what you can do, we can multiply n by a 1 and 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 it would still be n. If you have one apple, then you still have one apple. Okay, works out nicely. But what is a 1? Basically, we can multiply n by 2 over 1 times 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 times dot 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 up until, well, that's the real question. You can put this into two different forms. So you see, this is kind of um, n over n minus 1. But what's more convenient for us is to put this into n plus 1 over n terms. Okay, I hope you agree with me that this is indeed the case. Okay, so everything cancels out nicely. This and this and this, and you're going to end up with n over n. 
in the end. Okay, we can actually turn this into a product notation. So I'm going to introduce the pi notation now to you guys. We are multiplying n terms of this form together. So we kind of have, um, yeah, we can also turn this into um, n and n is going to cancel out to just one. So one over one plus n. We're going to have n terms in the end and our running index, let's call it k, starting from one of one plus one over n. One over k, one over k. That, that's our running index, I'm terribly sorry. Okay, so you see this is just what we have and yeah, it's always of this form. If you plug one into here, you're going to get one plus one is two and then stuff is going to cancel out in the process. Okay, so this does work out quite nicely actually. Also, it's a product, so the cool thing is if you raise stuff to the set's power, so n to the set's power is nothing but this right here, we can actually just drag this power to the inside. So we have turned this n to the set's power into something else. I want to play around a bit more with the stuff in the denominator down here. Set plus one times dot dot dot. You see, we still have this n factorial up here in the numerator. I would like to get rid of this. And it does work out quite nicely, actually. To be pretty honest, we are going to use the same trick as we did before right here. Right here, we had factored out n, but set times, you could say, okay? n multiplied with it, set times together. We can do the same spiel here. Why not factor out the one right here? For example, we are going to get one times, and I'm going to put it in a certain form that we are going to use. This is one plus z over one. If you factor out the two here, times two times, okay, this is going to be one plus z over two. We can move on with the spiel. Dot, dot, dot. Factoring out the n on the last term, times one plus z over n. In the real number, this shit is a bellion, meaning we can just interchange this parenthesis action right here and this one, two, n, whatsoever, together and n factorial together. This is n factorial times a product, once again, a finite product, running from, okay, let's say k equals to one. We are going to let it run over the same index. Why the hell not? It does work out wonders. It's over the integers to n of one plus and those are of the form z over k. And this is pretty fucking dope because, well, we can plug this chunk into here. Overall, our gamma of z is nothing but our limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial and n factorial is going to cancel out in the process. Also, the cool thing about this pi notation, this product notation is that we can, even if you divide by stuff, it's multiplicative. So we can just drag this pi notation to the outside. It does work out. It's working with products and products are pretty quite cool if you are not dividing by zero. Then we have this one over z factor. We have this common finite product from k equals to one to n of, and okay, up here, n to the z power, are just those terms. One plus one over k to the z power over one plus z over k. And this, my boys and girls, is the Euler definition of the gamma function. And now we are going to show that in the limit, this actual limit, it's seriously approaching our gamma function. So what we are going to do is we are going to show that this product notation right here is actually equivalent to our integral notation because we know by our derivation that this right here is seriously our gamma function. Our, um, yeah, z minus one factorial. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. So before, I hope you remember, I have given this term right here the name kind of gamma function because we are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity and we are going to arrive at our gamma function itself. We can actually find a certain integral representation of this kind of gamma function. 
by taking a look at our limit definition of our exponential function. Namely, we can define our gamma n of z as nothing but integral from 0 to infinity of x to the z minus 1th power and well we can express e to negative x as nothing but 1 plus negative x over n well let's just write 1 minus x over n to the nth power dx. We are going to change this limit a little bit we are going to put an n up here because we can just take the limits simultaneously where n approaches infinity and you are going to get your infinite upper bound right here. And this right here is our kind of gamma function in integral form. And now we are going to see if this expression is actually equal to what we had right here or in the stage before with this n to the z power times n factorial blah blah blah. For this it's going to be absolutely ugly. You can actually do mathematical induction on that, maybe that's the more elegant way. I'm going to do a direct proof. <laughs> it's going to be fucking dope. At first I would like to make a little change of variable. Let x over n, this does make sense, be equal to t, meaning our dt is nothing but, well, dx over n. Also you can bring this n to the other side, n is not equal to zero, we don't want that. So n times dt is nothing but dx. We're going to end up with an integral running from, okay, zero to, if we plug n into here, one of, okay, x is nothing but t times n. So this is um, n times z to the negative one power, t times z to the negative one power, times t to the z minus one power, whatsoever, one minus t to the nth power, n times dt. You see this n and this, 1 over n is going to cancel out. We have this n to the z power term already. This is good. This is pretty good. n to the z power times an integral from 0 to 1 of, well, t to the z minus 1 power times 1 minus t to the nth power integrated with respect to t. And this is where the real annoying shit is going to start. We are going to do integration by parts. A lot. <laughs> N times probably. CJ. Oh! Up until Z plus N. Okay? That's an ugly fucking direct proof. T to the Z plus N power. <sighs> we have done a lot of stuff. I want you guys to consider when we multiply those diagonals together. The real cool thing is our upper and lower bounds are from 0 to 1. Every time we multiply those together, we have to apply the upper and lower bounds. On the lower bound, we have zero. But if we plug zero into here, this whole multiplication is going to go to zero. We got rid of that. If we plug one into here, that's one minus one to some power is zero to some power is just zero. All diagonals are going to cancel out whenever we have either a t right here on the zero boundary or we have a one minus t term right here. So shit is going to cancel out big time. So this and after that, okay, I didn't really need this right here, but we still get rid of this right here. So that's the last term where we are going to have zero overall. And then we are ending up with those two multiplied together with the upper and lower bounds applied to it. Like I said, it's an absolute mess we are going to end up with. Okay, right now, this is negative one to the nth power times n factorial. Also, we had n to the z power over z times z plus one times dot 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 up until z plus n times t to the z plus n power from zero to one. <laughs> Holy shit, my boys and girls out there. If we plug zero into here, like I said, it's going to vanish. If we plug one into here, one to any power is just one. So that's good. We are going to get negative one to the nth power, n factorial, n to the z power, over z times z plus one, times dot dot dot, z plus n. Whew. The only real thing to take into consideration is our negative one to the nth power. The gamma function is a strictly positive function all the damn time on the real numbers, for example. Except for negative one, zero, blah, blah, blah. There is just going to explode those other poles. Never mind, we don't care about that. So we have to do some case study right here. Either we have 
n is odd or n is even. That's why I placed a little uh, number on our iterations that we had here. Meaning, if our n is odd, meaning n is of the form 2 times k plus 1. Okay, then we are going to get negative 1 to the 2k plus 1th power. But if our n is odd, then we are going to uh, land on an odd iteration where this, stops, uh, where, where this stop ends, okay? Somewhere on the odd iterations. But take a look at our odd iteration, for example, the first one. On our first iteration, we also get by this integration by parts a negative sign. Meaning, we are actually going to multiply this by another negative one. So this is 2k plus 2 power, which is 2 times k plus 1. This is negative 1 to an even power, leading us with a positive sign. If we have n being equal to something even, 2 times k for example, well, then we have negative 1 to the 2k power, but on all even iterations, we actually just have a positive sign right here. So really, nothing changes. So it really doesn't matter if you have an odd or even power right here. Just because of this alternating definition of integration by parts, we are actually, well, going to get a positive sign right here. Meaning on all occasions, this thing right here is nothing but n factorial times n to the z power over z, z plus 1, times z plus n. And this right here is actually equal to, well, like I said, our kind of gamma function that we had before. And now we can safely take the limit as n approaches infinity right here. We know that this is our Euler definition that we have up here of our gamma function. And now it's basically just a matter if we can actually interchange this limit and this integral sign and actually take the limit simultaneous right here. But it does work out. I'm not going to go through this right here. That's um, some work for the pure mathematicians out there, but it does work out well. And, and in the limit as n approaches infinity, it's definitely our gamma function that we have right here because that's just our exponential function like I proposed right here. And well, if n approaches infinity also on the upper bound, it does work wonders. So those two are actually equal. I just wanted to do this messy integration by part stuff because I can, my boys and girls out there, I thank you guys for watching. If you didn't enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy those QED t-shirts I created or support the channel on Patreon, whatever. Whatever you do, I thank you guys for watching. Until the next video, have a flum upload day. See ya!